He was front and center in the Netflix documentary, The Texas Killing Fields. New tonight, an FBI agent who has investigated some of the Houston area's most infamous murders is set to retire tomorrow. And he is talking exclusively to Grace White about the cases he's helped solve and the one that still haunts him to this day. Hi, Richard, good to see you. Uh, nice to meet you. You may not know his name, but you know his cases. How many years have you spent in law enforcement? Right at 31 years. More than 20 of those years, Richard Renaissance spent at the FBI. But what's unique about him, many of Renaissance cases, he knew from his time as a League City police officer. It was April of 1997 when Laura Smither went missing. Jessica Kane disappeared the same year. Since I was assigned to a narcotics task force here in the county, and we stopped all narcotic stuff and became searchers for uh, both cases. Laura's body was found, Jessica's wasn't, until 2016, when suspected serial killer William Reese led Renison to a field near Hobby Airport. We, we didn't know if he was lying to us and just trying to get out of prison, uh, but I think all of us uh, involved we're pretty sure he was telling the truth. Okay, here we go. Ah! He was, and authorities found Jessica's body. Reese was later convicted for three murders in Texas and one in Oklahoma. What case still keeps you up at night? The killing fields in League City. I speak with Tim Miller regularly. For a man who's done so much good for so many people, it would sure be nice to get him some closure as well as the other three victims. Tim Miller, the founder of Texas EquiSearch, had a daughter, Laura, who was one of the girls murdered. The others, Heidi Fye and two girls who were later identified using forensic genealogy. When we sat down with League City to start working, it was 45 minutes and we had Donna Gonsolin ID'd. Um, it took one hour to get Audrey Lee Cook identified. But of all his cases, by far the toughest emotionally, was the shooting on May 18th, 2018 at Santa Fe High School. Where were you when you got the call? Five years later, it's still hard to find the words. Renison was the FBI's lead agent on the investigation. I went over to the high school and I was there um, about 7.50 and he was in custody at eight o'clock. Definitely the worst day of my career. But what's gotten him through the relationships he's built. 100% will remain friends with everybody. That includes not just fellow investigators, but victims and their families Renison still talks to. All people who have shaped him and maybe helped him prepare for retirement in their own way. Um, I'm a lot more patient now than I was. Um, I would used to, okay, let's get it done. It's gotta be done, it's gotta be done right now. And, and, and I think I've, I've learned the subtle art of, of patience. What a career, Grace. We know the Netflix documentary on the Killing Fields came out last year, late last year. Any leads on that? Yes, actually, this is one of those cases Renison said he would work until the day he retires. In fact, when we sat down for this interview a few weeks ago, he was vetting a tip that had just come in on the Killing Fields case. It's a case he says they have a whole team of people working on. So when he leaves, there's people that can step in behind him and continue that investigation. Hope it happens. We'll he keep leaves, following it. Leaves behind quite the legacy in the office. That he does. Sure. All right, Grace, thank you.